Hey there folks, today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a Minecraft server on an Amazon EC2 instance. Alright, so we're going to need two things to get this started. An Amazon Web Services account with billing information set in place and Bash. If you're on Linux or Mac OS, you already have this built into your system. If you're on Windows like I am, you're going to need to get Git Bash. And a link is down in the description. With those in place, let's head over to the Amazon EC2 console, which you can also find a link to down in the description. After following the link, you'll be put out on the spot request portion of the EC2 console. Here we're going to click request spot instance and under request type request capacity one and we're going to search for an AMI. Go ahead and select community AMI and copy the AMI ID from below into the search box and hit enter. You should now see an AMI that I have created that houses a vanilla and spigot Minecraft server. If you want to create your own AMI, there will be a link to a separate tutorial in the description. Go ahead and hit select. Next, we want to clear out the instant types and hit select to choose what type we want. Under instant types, let's go ahead and hit general purpose and select m3.medium. This one runs for 0.0094, which comes out to a little under $7. It has one vCPU and 3.75 gigabits of memory. Go ahead and hit select. The rest we can leave as defaulted, but I would suggest looking at availability zone, more specifically the pricing history, to see maybe where you would want to put your instance. If you don't want your pricing to go over a set amount each hour, I would set a max price. However, I'm going to hit automatic. On the next page, look for EBS volume, go ahead and select how much storage space you want, and unselect delete. If you leave this selected, all of your storage will be deleted once the instance is terminated or stopped. I would suggest just leaving it unchecked so you can create new AMIs from your old volumes. Next, scroll down to set key pair and roll and click create new key pair. Click on the tab that opens up and you should see a screen similar to this without the search filter. Go ahead and click on create key pair, enter a name and hit create. A file should download that is your key as well as you should see your key fingerprint in the console here. Now let's go ahead and move the key into our .ssh folder that is under our user directory. This is a hidden folder so make sure you're able to see hidden folders within your operating system. Next let's head back to the previous tab and select our key. Now we're going to need to set up a security group so go ahead and click on create new security group, open up the new tab and click create security group. Go ahead and enter a name and a description. Next we're going to need to add two new rules. We're going to need to add a SSH rule from our IP address. Then we're going to need a custom TCP rule from anywhere on port 25565. And then click create. Now let's head back to the tab we were in before. Click refresh and select our security groups. You can't see mine, but go ahead and select yours. And then we're going to hit review. On the next page, we're going to see all the details about our spot request and look over these and then hit launch. Click OK and we'll be sent off to a page where all of our spot requests are listed. Next, we're going to need to hit on instances. Here we'll have a list of all of our instances that we have under EC2. So we have our Minecraft server here and it's initializing. We're going to have to wait until we have two out of two checks uh, to be able to connect to our server. Once our checks are complete, go ahead and grab the public DNS of your server and launch your git bash or bash terminal. Next, we're going to need to SSH into our server. So go ahead and enter the command that's listed below in the description for SSHing into your server. Go ahead and click yes when prompted and you'll be in your Ubuntu 16 Minecraft server. As you can see, there's nothing in the home directory, so let's cd into the root directory. Here we have a Minecraft folder which has a vanilla folder and a spigot server folder listed under it. Let's cd into the vanilla one for now, and we're going to go ahead and nano into the EULA file. Once inside, we're going to need to go ahead and change uh, EULA equals false to EULA equals true, and then hit Control x y and enter next we can nano into the server properties but as you can see there's nothing listed under here because we have yet to start the server for the first time so let's go ahead and exit out and go ahead and start up the server for the very first time 
All right, so the command for starting up your Minecraft server is listed below for both the spigot and vanilla, but we're gonna be using the vanilla one here. Make sure to have about a minimum of one gig, at least one gig, and go ahead and put your max up to about two or three, depending on what server you've chosen. You should now see your server booting up. So let's go ahead and grab our public IP address and start up Minecraft and jump into our server. Your IP address is listed on the instances tab of EC2. So once inside Minecraft, go ahead and hit multiplayer, select add server, type in a name for your server, and add your public IPv4 IP address. Next click done and click play. Now you should be able to log into your very own Minecraft server. This is just a basic guide to getting your Minecraft server started. I'll have more videos coming out shortly on maintaining and doing kind of neat things with your server and more about the spigot servers and actually using plugins and such things like that. If you found this video helpful, think about hitting that like button. And if you want to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button.